welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. This is Jessica, and my librarian co-host is... This is Evelyn Hershkowitz, Rita Services Librarian from Syosset Public Library. And, welcome and our special to guest today <laughs> I is... Was, I was Evelyn. I, was, I, forgot, I realized I forgot to say welcome to Turn the Page podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We're, we're in week, I don't even know, of quarantine, sort of, but not really here. So we'll just, we'll forgive all that. But welcome to Turn the Page yeah. podcast. So our special guest today is... Wendy Holden author, historical novelist. Uh, my new novel, The Royal Governess, is about the childhood of Queen Elizabeth II, and I'm so happy to be talking to you about it today. We're really excited to, uh, to have you on. I know that this book is going to be of interest to many of our patrons. Um, I myself thought it was really, really good. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I love it, and I think, I mean, there's there's never a time when the royal family is not of interest to people, no matter where they live. I think no, um, both sides of the pond. As yeah, both say, sides right? of the pond. Sure. Um, they're, the, I know, they're the gift that keeps on giving, aren't they? They're like a soap opera. I, I think there's a little bit of that for the reason as to why. Um, and it's so funny because I know I myself, like, I've never necessarily considered myself one of those people who was super into the royal family. And I know that now there's all sorts of other things going on with this. But I had um, woken up early the morning that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were getting married and just happened to catch it streaming and was like, oh, like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like breathtaking so you know I always find myself drawn in whether it's watching the crown or something like that so this was a really cool um really really cool book yeah I'm Thank really you. enjoying it it's really Thank you very book. much yeah. I'm, I'm really so you thrilled wanted... to hear that Thank you yeah would you like to tell our listeners the story what it's all about well it's a it... Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the many things about the story, which is great, is that it hasn't ever really been told before. It's um, the story of the Queen's childhood and, and the story of, of, of loads of huge um, historical events in Britain and the world, but told from a completely new point of view. And I came across this story, the story of Marion Crawford, which um, in a secondhand bookshop in the north of England um, in, in a couple of years ago, it was a really rainy day. I was just poking around the shop and it this just fell out. It just fell out of the shelves at my feet. And I picked it up. It's, it was called The Little Princesses. And it was right. a memoir by this woman, Marion Crawford, who'd been governess to Elizabeth, Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret from when they were small girls until they were 17 up. years, right? She worked for them. Yeah, for exactly. Exactly. So she'd been right at the heart of the British royal family for all that time. And there were so many amazing aspects to it. I mean, the most immediate one that really struck me straight away was that she never intended to work for royalty. She says on the very first page, I wanted to work in the slums of, of Edinburgh, the project, you know, with the poor children. I wanted to help the really poor children. I wanted to close the gap between the haves and the have nots. And I was sort of reading this and thinking, how did a woman, a progressive woman with that set of values how did she end up teaching little princesses so that was the first thing how did that happen and so it was basically it was it was um, a chance encounter with the princess's mother and she didn't want Marion Crawford Crawfee didn't want to work for royalty at all but she went she was persuaded to go and give it a go for a month so she went down to London went down to Windsor went to their house it was a long train journey. She was really tired. She wanted to go to bed. And she was met at the, at the door by this butler, this very formal, imposing butler, who said, Princess Elizabeth has insisted on waiting up for you. And Crawford thought, oh, no, you know, this, she's going to be such a brat. I'm exhausted. I want to go to bed. I want to go home. And she went up to the nursery. And there, sitting in the bed, was this completely adorable child with curly blonde hair, completely normal nightdress, sitting up in bed. And she tied two dressing gown cords to um, the bedposts and she was pretending to drive her horses around the park 
and Crawford was completely amazed and this was so unexpected it was so charming and from that moment on that it was love at first sight that was it and and they were close for 17 years so that was the first thing the kind of unexpected contrast of it and, and just because she'd left um the slums behind the pool of edinburgh behind her didn't mean that she didn't bring all those ideas with her and so she brought all her ideas about um social justice and, and, and liberal values with her to the palace and she insisted on taking the little girls out into the world to, to meet normal people and see how normal people lived and so she took them on a tube on the underground she took them um, to Woolworths shopping she took them to the public swimming baths and she even set up a um, Buckingham Palace guide pack you know she really wanted them to have a vaguely normal existence because she felt that was important, which it obviously is. And I think that's a lasting legacy because, you know, these days people talk about the Queen and they say, oh, she's got um, the common touch, people identify with her, she's so sensible. And I think that's down to that early influence um, of Crawford taking her out, out and, and showing her how normal people live. That was only one part of the story because that, that was amazing enough. But the other thing that was brilliant um, for a novelist but, and, and which was fantastic for the royal governess because it provided the middle segment of the story was that her 17 years with the Windsors were the most amazing 17 years sort of ever. I mean, anywhere, really. Because, first of all, it was the abdication of, of King Edward VIII, which was a, a massive event and nobody saw it coming. Only a very few people knew it was even about to happen. So when it happened, it just hit everybody just like a sledgehammer it was amazing so that was the first thing and then the coronation of the children's parents which was not supposed to happen George VI, Queen Elizabeth and then as if all that wasn't enough the whole of World War II and she was with the royal family during the, all these amazing events so that was fantastic to, for me to, 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 to um, fictionalize. It's so, it's so current when you really think about it, because now people are saying, oh, we're living in extraordinary times, you know, and yeah. there's so many historical events. But when you put it that way and when you really think about it, so were they. It, completely. In a completely yeah. different, in a completely different yeah. way. And I know... Yes. Um, the story of the application yeah. has kind of come about a lot more in media lately, um, you know, like whether it's the King's speech or whether, you know, yeah. it's being dramatized. Absolutely. And I think I mentioned the crown before, which yeah. Yeah. I've enjoyed, yeah. although I've heard that they've taken a lot of license. Um, yeah, I think, I think so. But I mean, but then again, you know, as, as a historical novelist, um, so have I, you know, but maybe not yeah. the same ones, but yeah, you, you build between the facts to, to, to develop your characters and and it's great fun to fill in between the, the known facts right. but yes absolutely they, they were living in amazing times and and and, and the these events followed so fast one after the other yeah. you know and and then of course the end of Crawford's story was just as dramatic because having spent these 17 years right at the heart of royalty having a ringside seat at the greatest show on earth she was completely cut off and ostracized and, and cast into the outer darkness having been right at the center of things because she wrote this very affectionate memoir which is the one I found in the bookshop and so her story is extraordinary it's got three different distinct um, acts I suppose like a film I suppose. and it's it's just incredible you could not have imagined an ending like that 40, nearly 40 years of ostracism from the family that she'd say served her life you know, served so well for such a long time and given up so much of her personal life for so yeah it was you know just amazing and, and when i found it i could not believe that the story had never been told before but one of the reasons that it hasn't is that she spent these 70 years completely whitewashed from history largely as a result of the royal ostracism nobody wanted to talk about her nobody wanted to write about her she was like you know from boat and it was a meta you couldn't mention this woman it was that bad so I felt that I was bringing into the light something that had been buried for a very long time and not for any very good reason. And it was an incredible story, uh, or several incredible stories. But all it is at incredible. the heart of it, always this um, woman, this, this, this you know, sparky young woman and this, this little girl, such an un unlikely couple. So, yeah, so that's, that's the story in, in a nutshell, I suppose. Now, they actually, they were so fond of her that they gave her a place to live for life 
and then they took it away yeah, from her absolutely. after the book came out. It gave, that's right. That's right. And, and actually, really interestingly, um, people often ask me if there's any uh, relationship or, or similarity, I mean, between um, Meghan Markle and mm -hmm. um, Marion Crawford. And there are many similarities. And the first one is that they actually lived in the same place. They lived in that same cottage, Nottingham Cottage. Oh, no in, way! Um, Kensington <laughs> Palace, this beautiful little cottage. Yeah. They, they, so Marion lived in it first, and when Harry and Meghan started living together, that was where they lived. And, and it's so extraordinary that they should be the, that connection. And the other connections are, are also really amazing because they were both career women, you know, both women who came from a different background to royalty, both with liberal ideas, with woke ideas about, and wanted to, to modernise the monarchy. And it went wrong and they both had to leave and they were both associated with a sensational book. You know, so it's amazing that the, it, the, the story should be so similar and they lived in the same place. It's yeah. crazy to me that, um, you know, because a lot of people were so quick to equate Meghan Markle with Wallace Simpson because, you know, American divorcee. Yeah. But this is, uh, this angle sure, sure. seems, yeah. I, I guess, a fresh yeah, look at it. Sure, sure, that, that, that's true. But I think um, Wallace Simpson is, is also a really good um, parallel. And one of the reasons for that is not many people know. I mean, I'm really interested in Wallace Simpson because she's one of the many American characters in the world governors because I've had a great time taking great Americans and putting them in the book. So Wallace Simpson is one of them. And the Kennedys are also in it. And Mrs. Roosevelt and General Eisenhower both make star appearances, as, 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 as you know. So, so that's um, that been brilliant. But um, Wallace Simpson was also a modernizer. And one of the, the interesting things about her was she, she became very involved with um, the Prince of Wales, as he was, before he became King Edward VIII. Um, and she was really, they were really drawn to each other because he was really interested in, in America. He loved Americans. He saw it as a land of the future, a modern place, really unlike Britain, which was totally stuck in the past as he saw it. And she, he associated her with all these modern influences. And she really wanted to help him. She wanted to encourage him. She felt it was important that the monarchy was modern in the same way that Crawford did and the same way that Meghan Markle probably does. So they're really similar characters. They did similar things. I mean, they, they're not the same people and the, the things that happened to them are obviously different and for different reasons. But the arc of the, you know, the outsider comes in, tries to modernise, has to leave. And actually Wallace Simpson wrote a book as well. She wrote this great book called The Heart Has Its Reasons, which is such a great title. And, um, you know, so I, I'm really interested in, in they, they all have um, similarities, absolutely. But, but back to Nottingham Cottage, which was the, the place that um, Meghan Markle lived and Corfe lived. They, she had to leave that, as you say, as you rightly say, because um, once she was ostracised and she was out of royal favour, she had to leave the house. And she went up to live in Aberdeen, in North East Scotland. And she bought a house there, right by the road, it's really sad, right by the road to Balmoral. And the idea, I'm sure, was that she would be there by the road and in case one year they decided to forgive her and sort of realise that it was already unfair and just, you know, bring her back into the fold, she would be there. And so they could just turn into her drive, come and have a cup of tea and it would all be fine. And I think she just spent the whole of her life hoping that would happen. And every summer she must have stood at the window, which is the beginning of my book. I just imagined in the Royal Governess this old lady standing at the window hoping that they would stop, but they never did. So, you know, she, she went from Nottingham Cottage to this really bleak situation, um, hoping that something would happen that never did. And she spent the rest of her life um, never seeing them again, you know. And when she died, they sent no flags to her funeral. Such a sad end. So, yeah, yeah that, was, that, that, you, was, uh, that was the end of, of Corfi. Do you feel that they did the right thing? Or did she do the wrong thing by writing the book? No. No, I think they did. They, I think they were very hard on her. I, th I mean, it's an interesting question. Did she do the wrong thing? I mean, I think she was tricked into doing it. I think she had a very, th there were lots of mysterious, uh, sort of murky circumstances surrounding it. And it actually began as a project. The Queen Mother, the, the, the Princess's mother, had um, come up with herself. I mean, she wanted um, some articles to be written about her eldest daughter. And so it began life. She sort of get, came up with the first idea. 
But Crawfy ended up doing it because Crawfy's husband, who was quite tricky, felt that she should write the articles and not the man that the Queen had chosen. And, um, but, and so she, she went to ask the Queen if she could do it. The Queen said no. And Crawfy decided to shelve the project. That was it. But by then, her husband had got together with this couple of magazine editors. I regret to say they were the, the editors of the Ladies Home Journal, the, uh, this, which was a very successful American magazine at the time. And they basically manipulated her in, in, into writing the articles that became the book, The Little Princesses. And it's, it, it's, it's sad because I think she thought that um, the Queen would, this is, when I say the Queen, I mean the Queen, the present Queen's mother, the Queen Mother, um, who was the Queen at the time. It's so confusing. Everybody's a Queen, everyone's called Elizabeth, so it's a bit, a bit confusing. <laughs> um, she, she was hoping that, um, she, the, the idea was, she, Crawfy thought that the Queen would give permission and nothing would be published without her say so. That wasn't true. She didn't give permission and they published it anyway. The no. ladies and journal editors egged on by the husband. So it was a kind of conspiracy anyway. But, you know, it was. It, so I think she was sort of tricked. But it was I think they were very hard on her because I think they they thought the royal family thought that if they were really hard on Crawford, even though the book was really harmless, they would stop someone else ever writing a word about the royal family in the future and it would really discourage people to which I can only say well that went well <laughs> no one's ever written a word since yeah now <laughs> it's been now a non-stop like everything's um, almost an open book right now books, right isn't it? you know so yeah yeah absolutely yeah so there's been so many and and, and the royal family invade their own privacy so you know so it's um it's it's, it's a shame and, and if Crawford was still alive she would I can't imagine what she'd make of what was going on now. But anyway, but, it's yes, of it course. Was and, and, yeah. uh, it, it's, but hers was, yeah. So, yeah. So I think they were really hard on her. And, uh, and I think she was tricked. So it was all really sad. But, but there we go. It makes for a great story, even if it's a yes, sad it one. Does. Is this book being published in London or in England also? Yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's, it's been, it came out in the UK last week and it's, uh, it went straight into the top 10, actually. And it's of course. Six. Congratulations. I would, I would imagine congratulations. it does. Congratulations. congratulations. I, I, I was going to say, um, do you think but, the but times time. have changed the reception? Oh, you mean of, of Crawford's book or, or Crawford herself? Yes. Uh, Your you, book. Sorry, how, how do you mean? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there has been, of my book, well, I think people are, just hopefully just interested in the amazing story because the point of of it really is that it's it takes you behind the scenes it shows you the royal family from a completely different point of view over a, a, a very exciting span of time so i think that's the that's that's the main attraction um but as as far as crawford is concerned i think they could have been the royal family may be starting to think that they were a bit hard on her i mean the queen when the queen was 94 recently there was various, um, there were various new bits of material released, including a little bit of film, which had the little princesses dancing the Lambeth Walk, which is a kind of dance, obviously, with, with Crawford on board a ship. And it was very friendly, very sweet little bit of film. And it sort of made you think, well, maybe the Queen's allowed that to be released to show that she's, you know, reassessing the situation. But no, I mean, the thing about my book, and, and I... I, what I, I really enjoyed doing was, was bring the Windsors to life, the whole amazing family, these people who always seem to me to be people from the novel anyway, because they're all so distinct, they're all so glamorous, they're all so, you know, contrasting with each other. So, yeah, I had a really good time just, and no one has ever done it before either. No one has ever written a novel about the Windsors. So I felt I was breaking new ground, which is exciting. It sure is. I loved it. Yeah, loved absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I loved, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to step on you, Evelyn. I was going to say, I, I do love um, how well you captured the, you know, the youth, um, how everybody in the family had a nickname, how, you know, they really wanted to try to keep the girls as, yes, yes. Um, yeah. you know, within the realm of royalty as um, normal as possible, I guess, as you could. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I love yeah, Margaret's yeah. nickname. Yes. God, I thought that there was, was so a, sweet. There was a real, um, oh yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely bud because she wasn't quite a rose yet. Exactly. <laughs> they were completely obsessed with nicknames. It was really interesting finding out that side of it. It was really fun. And of course they gave Marion a nickname. She was called Crawford. Everyone had to have right. a nickname. So I think, that's quite book, fun. And I think it shows you a, a side of the British royal family that maybe 
yeah, that, 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 besides that, that book, um, what other research uh, people do don't expect, do you know, so for example, uh, I did, I, well, it's so many different things. I read every historical source I could. I mean, there's a, there are a huge number of histories of the 20s and 30s. So I read, I read all those. Uh, obviously, the, the Little Princesses and other things that Marion Crawford had written. But, um, and also lots of sort of unexpected things that I came across um, in secondhand bookshops. Lots of uh, sort of hagiographical biographies, I suppose, of, 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 royal, of the royal family. That you'd always find out something interesting in them. Because there's, there's just an enormous, I mean, every time something happens, every time somebody gets married, a book is produced. So there's an enormous wealth of information right. from which I could pick up all kinds of bits and pieces. So it was, yeah, lots of different things. And, that, and I also did lots of physical research. So I went around all the, all the locations and, and you know, examined all those. So just to give, give, so for example, going to the house where Corfu lived, just to give it, you know, a real sort of feel. Because it's all about putting yourself in that imaginative space and always remembering that these, these are people and imagine what would have, how would you react if, if that happened to you? You know, if you were a six-year-old girl, you know, what would you think when this woman sort of appeared? Because one of the things Princess Elizabeth first said to Marion Crawford was, you know, you've got short hair because she had a, an Eaton crop, which was a very trendy hairstyle at the time, really, really short. And, you know, and lots of little details. So, you know, she was quite, um, they were quite forthright. They, they said what they thought. <laughs> so, yeah, I, lots of different research. And also my own imagination, which was, you know, driven forward by all these things that I, that I found in these various sources. So it was great. I mean, I, I have to say I became completely obsessed with it. And Are you sort of still? Lived in the it's probably hard to shake. You're time. probably still obsessed with it. <laughs> well, actually, I am straight. I'm, a, I'm actually back there because I'm, my new book, the book I'm working on next, is about Wallace Simpson. Because I became oh, so I was hoping you were going um, to I'm, say I'm that. Yeah, I got so interested in her because I made her a character in, in The Royal Governors. And I thought, I thought that she deserved a, a, a book of her own because I thought yeah. it was about time she, she's, she's had such a bad press. And I don't think she was a bad woman. And I think she was quite funny and interesting. And she you know, came from a very unexpected place to, cut, to end up with the King of England. You know, when she came to London in 1928, she knew nobody. She had no money. She wasn't particularly attractive. She was quite old. Um, had no connection, so I, you know, I thought, how did that woman end up marrying King Edward VIII? So that was that story. So yeah, you know, it's the same thing. How did this person from this background, like Marion Crawford in the Royal Governors, come to enter the royal family and be such a, a huge influence? So I'm, I'm interested in these outsider figures, and Wallace Simpson is a great one, and I think there's a definite story there that no one's told before. Um, so I'm, I'm back in the 30s and uh, really enjoying it. One of the things I really liked was how you mixed in politics in the way that um, uh, Crawfee ended up running into a workers' march with the girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Was that yeah. something that I actually happened? Showed. Well, I don't, I'm not sure it did, but, okay. it, but I, was, I always work in the, in the, in the possibility that it, it could have done. It easily could have done because um, the 1930s in London and, and in Britain generally, but particularly in London, were, were quite um, tumultuous. I mean, there was a lot going on politically. Um, there, were, there were hunger marches coming from different parts of the country to demonstrate the degree of imp impoverishment and unemployment. There's a lot of anger. And I wanted to, to show this contrasting world of um, ordinary people in Britain and the royal family, because they were on completely different tracks. You know, the royal family were living in the kind of 1890s. You know, they were living this Victorian lifestyle in their castles and the shooting and, they, you know, the servants, all this stuff. And ordinary people were losing their jobs. They were starving. I mean, it was completely, uh, you know, they were, there was no connection at all. So, and, and Corfi understood that. You know, she'd come from a city where she'd seen all this. And as I said, she wanted to work with poor people. So she was all about trying to draw the two together because she could see that if they, if they didn't connect, uh, the royal family had, were going to have a fairly questionable future. And that's certainly the case after the abdication because the royal family were really unpopular after that happened because nobody was expecting it and the king had been so popular. He was completely beloved. He was so charismatic. He was so handsome. He was so glamorous. 
And, and when he left the throne, it was a huge shock. So um, I wanted to show, to show that, but also, and this is a, the, a, a, one of the characters I most enjoyed writing, the Queen Mother, Queen Elizabeth, um, the wife of George VI, the, the mother of, of, of our Queen, who she begins the book as a Duchess of York, as this slightly sort of um, trivial, sort of entitled person, doesn't take things particularly seriously, very grand, um, sort of a bit manipulative. And when, and when she becomes queen, she, you know, she would be enjoying it, this is great, I'm the queen, but, and, and all the time, there's, there's no connection between what's happening in the country. But once the war begins, that everything changes, and she becomes this, with her husband, with, with George VI, they become this, this, this figurehead for this, this, this focus of patriotic feeling, of, of the, the family at the centre of the wartime struggle, you know, kind of noble figures who had a real purpose. And it was great being able to demonstrate how her character developed, because it was completely central to the story, that switch from this trivial woman to being this really important sort of moral leader, this, this focus of the home front uh, in, in, in the face of this terrifying enemy. So that was just really fun to write. So... Um, Yes, so the politics were always a crucial part of the story because they're, they're, they're the drama, they're the, they, they drive the drama and it's completely woven in with what happens to, to, the, to the royal family. So I had to keep a, a very sort of close eye on, on developments at the time because it was very fast moving and very complicated. So yeah, it was a, a learning curve for me actually because I mean, up, in, up until now, I, this is my first historical novel, so it was a big, um, a big Thing to take on but I really enjoyed it and, and it's, I learned a lot. So the next book when is have you started writing it or are you just doing the research now? Oh well um, I have started it but but <laughs> I have to keep um, yeah I'm sort of writing and, and it's mostly planning because because of um, the lockdown I mean basically my family my children have been at home for six months they haven't been at school for six months which has made things a bit tricky work-wise so I'm just sort of planning to, I've just been trying to plan the book so that when they finally go back to school, I'll just be able to just write it really quickly from, from the plans that I've made. It's, it's kind of, you know, um, COVID-19 sort of writing is the, the only way to do it. Normally I'd be sitting in my, my office and I'd spend hours every day doing it, but that's not really been possible. So I've been able to just research and read as and when I can. So, I, I, yeah, hear, but I, mean, I hear it's, it's, that. It's still, it's, I've become, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we're all in that position, aren't we? It's so were you, tricky. Were you planning um, a worldwide tour? For yeah, the it's, it's been, I was planning, I, I was, there was something, we, we were, but it, and it didn't, um, it didn't really materialize. I would love to do something in the future though. I would love to, I'm, I haven't been to America nearly enough. I would love to come properly and, and, and really go around and, and see everywhere. I would love that. But uh, Curious if you've ever met the queen or seen the queen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen her. I've never met her, but I have, I have, I have been to Buckingham Palace, which oh, wow. uh, was great. In fact, I, I, I was really lucky. Um, I was um, I was asked to join a, a literary um, a sort of association, which which had its meetings in Buckingham Palace when I was oh. researching uh, the royal governess. So, and that was just brilliant because I was able to not just go into the state rooms where you can you can go on, if you went on a tour of Buckingham Palace, you go there anyway, but. I was able to go into sort of certain rooms in the upstairs corridors that um, where we had our meetings that, that, that you wouldn't go as a member of the public. And so I was able to see the, a bit behind the scenes and the kind of doorways that Crawfee would have gone into and the kind of stairs that she would have gone up and the kind of rooms that she would have known. And it was, that was great. That was a, a really, really fun. And I could see the gardens and there, there were various scenes from the, from the Royal Governor set in the gardens. And it, it just sort of, it was wonderful because I could, I could, you know, I could imagine the things that I described in the book happening in these places and, and actually seeing them, you know, in real life was wonderful. And, yeah, and I, so yeah, I love how relatable you made Crawfee also. Uh, well, you see, I never, I just always, always wanted to, um, Bear in mind that this this is a young woman. This is a yeah. student. You know, this is a lively young girl who yeah. never wanted to do this job. Who finds herself in this amazing situation. I mean, that was the thing I wanted, to do. and it was such a contrast, as I said, to the to, to the slightly staid and traditional world that she entered. She was so different, and she brought all this fun and life and 
norm normalcy to um, these little girls who were living a very um, isolated life in a, in, a, in a sort of stiff, old-fashioned world. So she kind of, you know, it was like a sort of one of those knights storming a castle and rescuing the princess. I mean, she sort of did that. You know, and I just, it was always, I just always had to bear in mind, this is a young woman, what would it have been like? And, you know, the fact that she couldn't have relationships that lasted very long because she couldn't really live with the royal family and have an, another life in, in the real world. And I think that's something else that maybe Meghan Markle has found. You know, you, you can't be in and out. You're either in or you're out. You can't be both things. But Crawfee, you know, found that out straight away. Well, her so, friend told her that you really have to be oh my with goodness. somebody that's in the ro with the royal family or it's not going to work out. Thank so, you. Thank you. So once again, this was Jessica and... Evelyn and our guest Wendy Holden. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for having me. I've really enjoyed being with so you to talk we, about Wendy, thank, you so much. thank you. We are going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.